tell us about the first time you were called something derogatory and uh, the circumstances around it. Am I allowed to say it? <laughs> it's up to you. If you're comfortable yeah. saying it, you say it. If you're not, yeah. you can. I mean, to I don't it. typically speak this way, but I do remember being 12 years old, um, being uh, allowed to take the TTC now to middle school, and um, and an older uh, white woman wasn't happy with the, what she would call the noise. We were being rowdy, apparently, to her. And uh, she said, looked right at me and said, shut up, nigger bitch. And it just, it hit me like hard. It just, I, my breath, it, it took my breath away. And I actually felt the anger. Like, I'm so happy I was raised a certain kind of way because I, I, I wanted to fight her. I was like, thinking about it, like you called me, you didn't call me one or the other. You, you, you called me both. Why, and, and a child, you know? And, um, and I carried that. And the fact that like, when you guys reached out, I didn't even have to dig. It was right there, right at the surface. I'm like, wow, how do I uproot this, this, this seed? I don't want this seed in me anymore. Thankfully, the seed didn't grow into what it could have, but it's there, you know? And uh, it was hurtful. So, so tell me more about that, because I think, I mean, we're speaking the same language here. Mm -hmm. Like, I was talking about my experience and how it, it's like, it gives, it gives me this visceral feeling. Like, I can feel what it felt like. I felt like I was punched in the gut when yeah. that happened, and it's so vivid to me 30 years later. So talk to me about that moment and how it still resonates with you. Yeah. Um, I was with my, my friends who, I was, I mean, I, I've been 5'10 since I was 10, wearing yeah. a size 10 shoe. And so I was the, the tallest, biggest one. And it, it was almost like she attacked the one who looked like a grown-up or the one she could size up, you know? That's, and that's just my thoughts on it. Um, how it's impacted me to this day is when I think about the, the N-word, I think about even my, the texture of my hair. For the longest time, I wouldn't wear braids. Like, this is like a big step for me to, to embrace my, my ethnicity, the coil of my hair. Um, to know that her, you know, calling me the B word, it's like, it made me even, um, oh God, just, it's so amazing what, what, how powerful memories are, eh? Uh, I, I thought about my mom, you know? You know, that someone could call someone's child that, you know? And to me, if she's calling me that, she's calling my mom, my sisters, my grandmother, my, all of the, all of the women, all of the Gordon women, all of the Thomas women, all of the Richards women. Like I thought, to this day, I can think about the legacy, the lineage. I'm like, wow, because you're, because you were having a bad day. You know, yeah. I'm so sorry. I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to re like, you know. No, it's all good. It's all, all I'll, I'll be honest. Like I'm, I would rather people know how it still, how it feels, how it made me feel small, you know? And, and I think that's the key, like people could, could if, and you know, you, when I'm looking at you, I'm thinking like people will think, it's just a word, like get over it. Right, but it's right, not, right. when you're a kid, that word is like I'm wrong. Absolutely. There's something wrong with me. So right. talk to me about that, about how you felt about yourself when she said that. Yeah, well interestingly enough, I, as a, <laughs> me becoming a singer, it could have, it had almost silenced me. Because as a result of being loud, I was attacked. And so it's like Dr. Maya Angelou, uh, she explains that when she was, she was molested and um, they put her molester in jail and she thought, um, oh no, they killed him, sorry. And then she went silent for like eight years, you know, like no speaking. She spoke only in her mind and then became this amazing poet. But what I'm, for me as a singer, like it, it really, um, there were times where I would, <laughs> I would feel like I was too loud, you know? And it, it impacted my confidence, right? And so it took a while for me to be able to get out of that space where it was, it, I went into writing, into my, my, my secret place. And, you know, where to me, um, that time you don't get back, you know? And so this is why this conversation is so important because we're able to, through our experiences, save someone else from that landmine, to be able to drop the baggage. You know, you are not what they said. You, you know, you are beautiful as you are. And to be able to especially encourage the offender to, to really pay attention. Because yeah, we were late. You know, we were the ones that experienced this abuse. But hurt people hurt people. 
And so for those who have inflicted the pain, they need us too, you know? Because they have their own baggage and That's they have right. their own way that they were raised. That's right, right. absolutely. How did those words impact you? Um, those words pretty much silenced me for a good part of my childhood. Um, I felt um, embarrassed about even the coil of my hair, like at times, especially when it came down to the N-word, like what is being a nigger? What is that? Like what is that? Is it my skin? Is it my hair? Is it my, my curves? Were you aware of that? Were you aware of that word? Oh you know? my goodness, unfortunately, the first time, uh, that was the first time I was publicly called that, like by a stranger. But in my grade three class, it was a Greek guy, I remember, I won't say his name, but anyway, I remember we were sitting, oh gosh, the memories, and our feet, were, our, our legs were crossed, you know, kids sit, and I didn't have my shoes on. And he said, you have monkey feet. And I, and I remember, I was like, what do you mean monkey feet? He said, well, your feet have a brown line, and then white, and, and that impacted me so much so, I didn't wear even open toe shoes, nothing until 2005. 2005, my stylist could not get me to show my feet, ever. I'm talking, I already won awards. I'm talking- You were to, like, had you yeah, know, top to wear records. Socks in my house, like it affected my dating life, where I would always put socks on. Wow. Yeah, monkey feet, yeah. It sticks. It sticks. It sticks. Your mom told you that when you were outside, you couldn't speak Patois. You had to speak Canadian. Canadian, yeah, plain English. Why? Well, I, I believe it was based on her experience um, migrating to Canada and being labeled um, uneducated and just realizing that um, the more proper <laughs> in her eyes, the more proper you could sound, the, more, the better positioning you'll have in life. Um, even my, my birth name, my birth name is Julianne Gordon. That's my birth name. I went, I put in a, um, an application for an apartment and I showed up and the lady was an Italian lady and she said, where's Juliana? I said, I'm Julianne. She said, no, where's Juliana? I said, I'm her. She said, it's, it's taken, literally. Is this recent? This was in uh, 1998, yeah. So. Even what my parents tried to do to have me fit in, even with my name, a lot of these things, it's generational. And so with, no, no, don't speak Patois outside of the house. No Jamaican, no. I barely listen to reggae music outside of the house. Yeah. Because you wanted to see mainstream. Mainstream, absolutely. It was life as a highway. It was, <laughs> it was however, as a, the singer I became, the versatility was unreal now, being able to sing Blue Rodeo and Tom Cochran and, right. you know what I mean? So it, it paid off. That's kind of what you're known for, your versatility, right? right? The yeah. versatility. Right. But how it affected my soul, you know. Okay. Like when I was able, when I grew up and I started in the, in the house or out and about, even on, on television, there were times where I'd say something in Patois and I'd go home and mom would be like, where are you born? Where are you born? And I'm like, come on, mom. I'm like, I'm a grown up now. You know, we laugh it off, but yeah. Right. Yeah. What do you want to tell people who are watching right now who are raising our next generation? For those of you raising our next generation, it's, it starts with us as, um, as the root and the children being the fruit. And so until we are healed and strong and, um, and have forgiven, then we, we can't create a better future. Really, the conversation needs to happen, and I think it's it's very important for us to be vulnerable, transparent, and as the parents say, this is how it made me feel. This is what I experienced, and you don't have to. You don't have to be angry, but tell me if this is happening in school. Tell me if this has happened at work, wherever. Bring it home, let's talk about it. Because how we form the conversation, how we form the response, is that's what's gonna basically put an end to this thing.